of charge. It doesn't cost you a penny. Now I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, once you enter that Tate Modern, you have a good look around, you're probably going to start to realise why it's free to go inside. <laughs> Unless you like modern art, you're going to have that time of your life. But folks, if you don't like modern art, look up to the left now. Because this is a piece of art here, and it's called St Paul's Cathedral. This cathedral is Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece, and it took 35 years to construct. This is the second largest dome in Europe to stand on the building. The first one is in Italy. It's at St. Peter's in the Vatican City. Folks, the best day to go to St. Paul's Cathedral is on a Sunday. Because every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, they have a service. And to watch that service, it is a fantastic experience. It's also free of charge. Now, folks, because it is free of charge, what they ask you to do, as they do in all the churches around the world, they ask you to make a donation. So once the service has finished, you're going to see a gentleman. He walks around that church there with a silver champagne ice bucket. And if you've enjoyed the service, you throw some money into the bucket. Most people who see the silver bucket, they put a banknote inside. Just like your 5, 10, 20 pound notes, because St. Paul's Cathedral, they always prefer the silent collection. A very old tradition in London. Just ahead of us now, this is the halfway point on our journey today. Is everyone enjoying the live commentary so far? Yeah. Okay. Folks, I hope you can all understand me okay. I am trying my very best here to speak nice and slowly and nice and clearly. Because as I said at the start, I understand not everyone has English as their first language. Now of course I don't usually talk like this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just so that everyone can hopefully enjoy the commentary. So I hope I'm doing a good job. To the right stand, ladies and gents, you've got a lovely pub here. This is the Anchor Tavern at Spankside. It was mentioned in Samuel Pepys' diaries, and over the years this pub has hosted some very famous people. Dr. Johnson, Samuel Pepys, Tom Cruise, Samuel Jackson as well, they've all gone to the Anchor Tavern to enjoy a few points. If you walk on the South Bank later on, you're going to walk in front of that very famous pub. Behind the buildings on the right as well, you do, you've got the Borough Market. Borough Market in London, that's where they sell food and flowers from all around the world. You visit the Borough Market tonight, it turns into a little town. You've got a bit of time, make sure you go to the market. Any people on the boat from America? Anyone from the States? Quite a few go. Look to the right now, you'll see the cathedral. This is Southwark Cathedral here, and that's where the son of a local butcher was baptised. His name was John Harvard. As John Harvard grew an older man, he then became the co-founder of the Harvard University in Massachusetts. So this is where he was baptised. We've got London Bridge ahead of us here, the fifth London Bridge to stand here over 2,000 years. It was opened in 1973 by Queen Elizabeth II. If you've got your cameras with you today, it makes a nice photo. As we go through the bridge, you can see the words engraved into the stonework there, London Bridge, because everyone mistakes London Bridge for the next one on our journey. But that next one in front of us there, that is called Tower Bridge. Now to the left, as we go through, you see the stone column there with a golden candle on the top. This is the monument to the Great Fire of London. It stands at 202 feet tall, and if you lay that column down in the opposite direction we are traveling, it falls where the fire started, which was in Pudding Lane in the bakery shop back in 1666. To the left as well, ladies and gents, you see that building there? It looks like a walkie-talkie. This is where you find the Sky Garden. I know some people were asking where the Sky Garden is. It's just up here to the left. It is a free viewing platform. If you go to the Shard, which is up to the right there, that's going to cost you 
about 50 pounds per person. You go to the Sky Garden, free of charge, and you get the same views as you would from the Shard. So save yourself 50 pounds, go up to the left hand side. You can see the warship in front of us here. This is the HMS Belfast. This Belfast here was built in Northern Ireland in the Harland and Wolf Dockyard. The same dockyard where they built the Titanic. It was launched on St. Patrick's Day back in 1938 and all of the guns that you see on the warship would fire a 100 weight shell 14 land miles. Today the warship is an extension to the Imperial War Museum. So if you want to, ladies and gentlemen, you can go on there and there are nine decks to explore. To the left now, there's our stop there, this is Tower Pier. Now folks, we are meant to take you into the pier now and end the tour. We are not going to do that. We're very nice on this boat, so what we like to do for our passengers is we're going to take you down to the bridge, we're going to turn the boat sideways and we get you a nice photo of Tower Bridge. So have your cameras in your hand, you get the photo very soon. Now folks, as we do go... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're now safely tied up alongside the Tower Pier. You are leaving us at this stop, you can head down to the exit gate now. And if you do look behind us, they have opened the bridge a little bit early as the boat was waiting there. So they, uh, they're allowed to open it uh, a little bit early in schedule. We have five props, they're on the outer roofs, and we've got life jackets uh, stored away in compartments. All the crew here are also fully trained to deal with any emergency. Now as we do go through Tower Bridge we leave the one square mile city of London behind us and we then go into the dockyards. And on this part of the tour you're going to see warehouses, you'll see a few dock entrances and a bit of American history on the tour. Just before we leave the city if you look at the top of Tower Bridge there you can see a glass floor. That glass floor there is the Tower Bridge exhibition. Now if you want to you can walk over the glass floor and look down onto the river Thames. A word of advice for the ladies on this boat, if you are thinking about going to the glass floor, you make sure you are wearing a pair of trousers. Because there is always a man standing on that bridge with a pair of binoculars looking up through the glass floor. If you go to the bridge today, you go to the glass floor, you'll be absolutely fine. Because that man is not there today, that man is talking to you through the microphone at the moment. So I'm not there today, you'll be absolutely fine. Folks, as mentioned about St. Catherine's Dock, it's just over here to the left hand side, and that is where we keep the glory on. The King's Barge is kept in there on the left hand side. This is Butler's Wharf here to the right. Uh, Butler's Wharf used to be the world's largest tea warehouse. So that's where they store the tea from around the world and also spices as well. It's all been converted now into luxury apartments. And if you look just underneath Butler's Wharf, you've got some lovely restaurants there. Uh, you've got the Pont de la Tour, you've got the Chop House, uh, Browns as well, some nice restaurants to the right hand side. An entrance on the right as well, in between the gaps of the buildings, that's known as St. Saviour's Dock. Uh, this is where they filmed Oliver Twist. You may have seen Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens. On that film there is a scene where Fagan, he drops the jaws into the sticky mud on Jacob's Island. So that's where they filmed it, on the right hand side. Up here to the left hand side you'll see three glass buildings, they do look very similar to each other. Now the architects in London, they always design the buildings with a theme and it never works. Because these buildings on the left here, they are meant to look like three French soldiers marching. Now folks, if you look again at the buildings and maybe squint your eyes a little bit, uh, what you'll start to realise is they look nothing like that whatsoever. Now to me that looks like a ship. And being next to the River Thames, it blends in a lot better. This is Hermitage Wall on your left hand side. Keep your attention to the left now. You can see just in front of us there, the building with the words on the side. It's called Oliver's Wall. Oliver's Wall was the first converted warehouse into luxury apartments. And at the top of this building, you have four penthouse suites. They used to be owned by celebrities. Uh, Robert De Niro used to live up there. Dame Helen Mirren, Graham Norton, and even the actress and the singer Cher. She used to live at the top of Oliver's Wharf. 
The area to your right here, this is called Bermondsey. Bermondsey is in the borough of Southwark and it's where Michael Caine, the very famous Cockney actor, was born and raised. He started his journey off as his name was Maurice Micklewhite. He changed his name to Michael Caine for his acting career. On your left as well, you see three red balconies with a letter E at the top. This is Execution Dock. This is where we used to hang the pirates. Pirates who used to come into London stealing the cargo. Once they were found guilty by the hanging judge, Judge Jeffreys, they were taken to execution dock and they were hung from the river wall. Three tides would go over their head until they drowned. And that torture was known as the Grace of Wapping. See the police force on the left as well? They are the Wapping Marine Police. They are the oldest uniformed police in the world put into action in the late 18th century to deal with those pirates. Because this part of the river that you're on now, this used to be the busiest port in the world. We had so much cargo coming in from overseas, and with the cargo come the pirates. They stole about 30% of it every single day. So they put the police force into action, and they stopped those pirates. A bit of American history, just here to your right now, you see the church spire here. Uh, this is St. Mary's Church of Rotherham. Buried at that church is Captain Christopher Jones, and he was the skipper of the pilgrim ship, the Baker. He took all the pilgrim farmers from London, he took them to Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and he sailed them on the Mayflower ship. Keep looking to the right there, you can see the pub. It's called the Mayflower, named after the pilgrim ship. It's got the American flag flying from the back of it, and on top of the pub, a bronze weather bank of how the ship it used to look. Back over to your left now, you can see on the north shore of the River Thames what used to be working warehouses. These warehouses, they stored the cargo from all around the world. If you look on the top of the buildings here, you can see the words now. you got New Crane Wharf there and also Metropolitan Wharf. This word wharf that you see is an old Anglo-Saxon acronym. This means warehouse at river front. This word wharf that you see. Follow the buildings down to the left. You're going to see the little white one at the end there. It's the oldest pub on the tidal Thames. It's called the Prospect of Whitby. It was founded in 1520. They used to call it the Pelican. It had a nickname as well as the Devil's Tavern. Because that pub there on the left, it used to attract all the criminals of London. So criminals like pirates, murderers and thieves, they used to drink in the pub. Not much has changed these days <laughs> uh, because the pub still attracts criminals. But slightly different ones now, it now attracts estate agents and politicians. They are the new criminals of London these days and they all drink at the prospect of Whitby. Folks, if you look further inland now, you've got the East End of London. The East End of London, it runs from Tower Bridge down to Canary Wharf. See the building in the distance there with the helicopter on the top of it? This is the Royal London Hospital. It's home to the London Air Ambulance and that hospital is in Whitechapel. Whitechapel years ago was renowned for Jack the Ripper. There were terrible murders to the young women and that was all done in Whitechapel. The area to your left now is called Bethnal Green. Bethnal Green is where the Cray Twins, they were born and raised. The very famous Cray Twins, Ronnie and Richard Cray. As they grew older men, they dominated the east end of London. Folks, if you look very close to the river's edge now, you see that funny shaped building here. Looks like it's been put together by a couple of five-year-olds with a Lego set. It's called Free Trade Wall. The architect of the building was quite a clever man because every single one of those apartments there, they got a river view. Now, if you've got a river view from your apartments, the price, it does go up. So maximum profit has been made at Free Trade Wall. Keep your attention to the left here. You're going to see a lovely house coming into view. Do look out for it. It's got a brown conservatory on the top. And this house on the left is called Sun Wall used to be owned by a famous film producer. His name was Sir David Ling. He produced the films Lawrence of Arabia, Passage to India, and Dr. Shabago. Now this house here, it's got nine bedrooms in it. 
There's a swimming pool underneath the Brown Conservatory. It's got a cinema for 60 people and also the nice garden to go with it. They sold it two years ago for the price of 27 million pounds. So this is some wall on your left hand side. Folks, if you keep looking to the left now, you see that entrance there? It's called the Limehouse Marina entrance. This is where you find the canal systems of the UK. Now, if you own a narrow boat or you're going to go on a canal boat holiday, some people like to do it. You go in there, you join the Regent's Canal. It's going to take you as far up as Brentford. You then go through a lock and you get onto the Grand Union Canal system. Once you're on the Grand Union, you can go to the north of this country. So if you want to go to places like Birmingham, Manchester or Liverpool, you can actually get there through that entrance. You've also got on the left there, ladies and gentlemen, probably the most famous pub that we go past today, the pub. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not part of the tour, this is not part of the tour. There's a lot of on one boat. But folks, if you look just by up on the left there, you see the pub there called The Grapes. And The Grapes is where Charles Dickens used to live. And whilst he lived there, he wrote two novels, uh, Great Expectations and Our Mutual Friends. This pub today is owned by Sir Ian McKellen. Uh, he's better known as Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings or Magneto from the original X-Men. He owns the grapes on the left hand side. If you look in front of us there, you can see this large development which is called Canary Wharf. A lot of people think Canary Wharf is the tower with the flashing lights. That's actually known as One Canada Square. Canary Wharf is the area and it gets a name from the Canary Islands. It's where they used to bring the fruits into the city. They sold this bit of land in the late 80s to two Canadian brothers, and they were called the Reitman Brothers. They wanted to build the financial district of Europe in this area, and they succeeded because if you look at all the buildings now, they're all occupied by all the top banks from around the world. So you've got banks like HSBC, and you've got Credit Suisse, you've got JP Morgan, all located at Canary Wharf. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just a bit of advice for you. If you do go to Canary Wharf Monday to Friday, it's very busy. There's over 200,000 bankers working in this area. Now, I avoid it during the week. That is a lot of bankers in one place. What I recommend you do do is go there at a weekend. Saturdays and Sundays, it's a lovely place to visit this. It's very quiet. You've got bars, you've got restaurants here. You've got three shopping centres, attractions for the families. And what you've also got there is the Docklands Museum. If you do like history and you want to learn about the history of the River Thames, just go to the Docklands Museum. It's free of charge to go inside. Now just cross the river to your right hand side. Just have a quick look to your right hand. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, just have a quick look to your left here, quick look to your left. <laughs> and what you're going to start to realise is that there is nothing to talk about. <laughs> because all there is on this stretch of the Thames is what you already know. These are apartments here, they cost millions of pounds, and me and my friend who's driving the boat, we don't own a single one of them. Now I can see some of you are quite enjoying the commentary. So what I'll do here, ladies and gentlemen, we usually give you a little break now. I'll just tell you about the river we are travelling on today. The River Thames is over 200 miles long, and its start of the Thames is in the Cotswold. That is the source of the river. We are a tidal river. It comes in every day for five hours. It flood tides, it gets to seven metres. Once it gets to the seven metre mark, it then turns, and it leaves London on the end tide for seven hours. The speed of tide on the River Thames is anywhere between 10 and 11 miles per hour. It's actually one of the fastest rivers in And you've arrived, ladies and gentlemen, at the centre of the universe. And I thought you might have been a little bit more excited. <laughs> well, if you're not too excited about that, which none of you are really, there's 50 pubs in Greenwich. Go to them all today. They are lovely places for a bit of research. All 50 pubs. Folks, you've got Greenwich Park here as well. Lovely daylight today in London. And have a stroll around.